Meanwhile, today, President Biden is announcing the first ever White House Office of Gun Violence Prevention. Vice President Harris will oversee the office, and Stephanie Feldman, a policy advisor to Biden on gun issues, will lead the office. The White House says it will play a key role in implementing the Bipartisan Safer Communities Act, the law that was passed last year, considered the most sweeping gun violence prevention measure in 30 years. The office will work federal, state, and local leaders, as well as advocacy groups, to prevent mass shootings and homicides that primarily affect low-income communities. Joining us now is David Hogg, president of Leaders We Deserve, co-founder and board member of March for Our Lives, a 2018 Parkland High School shooting survivor. David, thank you for being with us this morning. You're going to be there today with the, the president when he makes this, this announcement. What do you want to hear? I want to hear him speak directly to young people that made this happen. March for Our Lives started calling for this in 2019 with our peace plan, which was the most ambitious plan for gun control that uh, has ever been proposed, arguably, in American history, that we put out to the presidential candidates. We had a town hall with them where we asked specifically, there's video of Emma, or uh, ex Gonzalez, asking. Uh, presidential candidates about creating an office of gun violence prevention. And it's young people and survivors, people like Poe Murray from Newtown, uh, people like Erica Ford and so many others that made this happen that were on the front lines of it. And I want to hear the president talk directly to them and say, you did this, because the survivors need to know that their voices matter and that they are heard. And this is an example of how that's happening. You know, David, gun violence is so prevalent. And, you know, every time you and I talk, I mean, there have been hundreds, literally hundreds of people that died in between our conversations. That's, that's just almost like a daily reality in our country. D David, how, how is it that a conversation about this can end up being constructive, and constructive in real ways and in real terms? Well, I think, look, we need to take a holistic approach to this, and I think that's part of what separates the work of March for Our Lives um, more than anything. It's not only that we're survivor-led. We started after the Parkland shooting in 2018, where 17 of my classmates and administrators died. Uh, we marched in Washington, D.C. and demanded action, but we take a holistic approach. You know, whenever I talk to people, for example, when I was in the shooting club at my college, uh, when I talked to people who didn't agree with me, I said, you know, is there anything I could say to you that would change your mind about banning assault weapons? And if they say no, I say, okay, let's not talk about that then. Let's talk about that, what we can agree on, which is the fact that you probably do agree we need more mental health funding for the two-thirds of gun deaths that are suicides. We probably need to fund more programs. You probably do agree that we need to fund more programs that help stop young people from wanting to pick up a gun in the first place. Because the reason why Parkland doesn't have shootings every day isn't only because we, ha we don't have stronger gun laws than the rest of Florida. We have one of the best things at preventing gun violence in the first place, which is the fact that our community has resources. The median household income is well over $100,000 in Parkland. And that helps prevent young people from wanting to pick up a gun. But we need to address all the factors that play into gun violence. And that's how we're trying to have this productive conversation, why I'm so excited that President Biden is taking action and listening to March for Our Lives and our calls to action for four years. We've registered thousands of young people to vote. We've demanded action and protested at the White House, calling for this office for four years, and it is finally happening. And the only reason why that is, Jose, is because young people made their voices heard and voted. And we have to vote again in 2024, because this office, if we lose the presidency, if it goes to Republican, it's almost certainly not going to exist anymore. We have to keep the work up because the president is listening to us in addition to the action on climate that he just took. And if anybody is interested in supporting us in that work, they can go to marchforourlives.com because we're not stopping here. We have to keep going.